sometimes being announced as the forgotten wealth. So another side, another options or another story, of course. So um, these are my conflicts, and uh, you mentioned that already. So the tricuspid wealth and, the, is, and uh, percutaneous approaches are being summarized uh, recently, uh, and it's said it's no longer the forgotten wealth which it was in the past, at least in the, in, in the adult uh, setting. Although uh, these are the, the patients we are faced with in the uh, adult population, and this is a very old uh, netter picture, as you can see here, right heart failure. They come in uh, again and again, and they are on furosemide, and you can't treat almost those patients, and they run into a, cardiac liver cirrhosis. Of course, these patients have a, a tremendous mortality rate, which is depicted here. So it's like a, a malignant disease. And of course, also surgeons don't like to address this group of patients. So they are left for conservative uh, treatment. And so we considered how we might address these uh, kind of patients. So the tricuspid regurgitation is functional in the majority of cases, as you can see, 90% is uh, functional in TR. It's, it's uh, not that infrequent disease, and as I mentioned, it has, has a poor prognosis, and the surgical repair, the operative uh, mortality, if it comes to that group of patients I just showed you, is very high. So uh, we considered there might be uh, interventional options, but we have to face a lot of problems, one of those is the tricuspid annulus is huge. It comes up to five centimeters, it's shown here, and it extends to the lateral free wall. It has a very soft tissue surrounding. There is no calcification. So all these uh, are uh, difficult to address when it comes to interventional uh, uh, procedures. In addition, it's not a, a wealth in a plane, it's very much saddle-shaped, so uh, we have to face all these problems. So there are interventional concepts, and I give you a short overview as, of those. There are, as I separated those, are the autothopic concepts, wealth replacement, tricuspid analu, or uh, valvuloplasty, and the heterotopic concept, which I will come later on. So the other topic concepts uh, uh, and the uh, analogs and valvuloplasty concepts are the tri-inch uh, concepts, mitral line, former Edwards uh, is a new uh, spacer. Uh, I will show up in, in some minutes. There's also some mitral uh, uh, clipping being, being performed, which very uh, uh, very diverse uh, results so far. So the autotopic stent wealth implantation was first addressed by Bujimin in 2005, and as I mentioned, there are many, many uh, um, uh, adverse uh, events uh, uh, anatomically and functionally uh, to address this with the uh, autothopic stent wealth implantation. And actually, uh, these wealths were leaking, and he gave up uh, uh, recently. So uh, although, as we just heard about, I mean, there is a wealth and wealth implantation possibility, but that needs a pre-stented uh, uh, tricuspid wealth. So uh, Mostly addressed now is the annual plasty devices. Uh, this is a track inch uh, uh, being uh, invented by Marciano. And what he actually does, he, uh, he puts a screw in the, uh, uh, beside the annulus and then he pulls down the, uh, the uh, leaflet and uh, tries to bring, uh, to, to close the, the, the gap between the anterior and the posterior leaflet and end up uh, if everything is fine in a B leaflet uh, situation, then this is, is the stent which he anchors in the vena cava inferior. So it's also in its infancy 
as well as a mitral line uh, device which uh, uses some pledgets and reduces the uh, valve area from which is huge, 14.1 uh, square centimeters to 6.1 square centimeters. Uh, uh, Joachim Schofer was the first uh, to address that, and uh, meanwhile some patients have been uh, uh, treated, and sometimes they use uh, uh, several uh, stitches uh, to address uh, the, uh, uh, the treatment. Uh, the last one I want to mention here from the, head, uh, from the autotopic concept is a former device which has been developed by uh, the Edwards company and they use a, a spacer to um, reduce the uh, coaptation defect which is anchored in the uh, right ventricular apex and at the venous side like a pacemaker lead. So uh, they claim that they improved the uh, exercise capacity and the quality of life. So um, we addressed uh, the heterotopic concept, which is a cava valve implantation, and we call this CAVI uh, uh, procedure in the valve we use, it's so-called trick valve. So the concept is that we uh, put two valves in the vena cava superior and vena cava inferior, and of course, uh, the inferior vena cava uh, valve is uh, positioned above the venous inflow like a chimney in the right atrium, which is depicted here in this uh, diagram. So uh, we did many uh, animal experiments in the uh, uh, 2009, 2010, and my coworker, Dr. Lauten, uh, published it. And, uh, we were very much concerned that the, the, there might be a thrombosis in the vena cava valves, but in no cases in the uh, animals or in the humans that ever came up, because the flow rate, of course, in the cava veins is very uh, low. Uh, during these animal experiments, we, uh, we could show once we dis destructed and dis uh, uh, the uh, uh, tricuspid valves that the coronary out uh, that the cardiac outflow dropped and then we implanted first one valve and then a second valve, first inferior vena cava, and you see the, it slightly res restored the cardiac out output when we, and it was better when we implanted two valves. So uh, in the end, we dared to go into humans. Uh, meanwhile, there was also by engineers in an in vitro investigation of the hemodynamics of transcata heterotopic valve implantation in the cava atrial junction, and these uh, engineers concluded that caval standard wells can potentially be considered as minimal invasive option to treat tricuspid regurgitation. So uh, we are very optimistic that we could go into the humans, and this is uh, the procedure. It's a straight-on uh, procedure. The, uh, the wells are individualized. Uh, um, being uh, uh, constructed, uh, it's, it's only being performed in compassionate cases. And what you see here already, that many of those patients coming in with a lot of leads in the uh, vena cover superior, aiming at the, they have uh, pacemaker and defibrillator leads. So if you want to implant an uh, orthotopic valve, then you have to, to overcome this, these problems with the leads in the right ventricle. So this is, as I mentioned, the individualized uh, valves for the cover superior. It's very simple, self-expanding valve, and it's uh, being here loaded and within a sheath, which then is retracted, and uh, the, the, the catheter is 27 French, so it's, uh, it's easy to cross uh, in a vein, uh, and we do just uh, uh, Z suture in the end, so this is no problem. Uh, then the sheath is retracted and the, uh, the valve is uh, uh, deployed in the vena cava superior. Same is being done then, and you see the, the pacemaker leads are just uh, pushed aside uh, to the vena cava superior. So this is the uh, uh, teamwork uh, together with my uh, surgical colleague, uh, Professor Dunst, and 
in a hybrid theater. So uh, this is a vena cava inferior uh, wealth, same uh, different uh, uh, procedure, but a different shape. And as I mentioned, it's uh, anchored in the hiatus of the diaphragm uh, as a chimney in the right atrium, as it's shown here. So, uh, and the sheath is retracted, so it's a very simple, very simple procedure uh, which can be performed. So, we will see the hemodynamic uh, outcomes in a minute. So, you see the V uh, wave in the superior vena cava, and here is the angiogram, and you see there's no regurgitant flow anymore in the uh, vena cava inferior, and of course the regurgitant flow of the right ventricle is diminished, and this, this is a wealth then in the vena cava inferior. It looks almost like a, uh, like a cardiac wealth, although it's a venous wealth here in the vena cava inferior. So, of course, this procedure needs still contracting right uh, ventricle if there is no regurgitant flow prior to a procedure, it doesn't work. Um, so these are the wealths, as I mentioned, 27 French, uh, individualized, uh, manufactured by a Canadian company, uh, and uh, it's a pericardial wealth. So these are the hemodynamics. Uh, before, we have the huge V wave here on the left side in the superior vena cava, which is diminished a little bit. Uh, at the excess, of course, that we increase the, the pressure in the right atrium. See, so the V wave, uh, the V wave is increased, and in the inferior vena cover, it's uh, very much diminished, as you could also see in the fluoro. Um, so uh, this is uh, one of the patients surviving uh, 27, uh, uh, 24 months after CAVI. Uh, it has a, uh, the right ventricle remodeled, it uh, became smaller, and the, in the inferior vena cava, you see that the, uh, even the mean pressure is dropped, as well as the superior vena cover. so uh, the patient is doing very well, and it restored even and normalized its liver function, so this is a very satisfying result. As I mentioned, it's compassionate cases, and uh, here you see uh, the autopsy result. We never have any problems with uh, thrombosis in these venous valves, uh, although the patients are anticoagulation. And you see here uh, the, the way we uh, de deploy the, the valve. So these uh, um, uh, early experiments were repeated uh, uh, here in a group uh, in uh, Berlin at the Charité Laule. And he used um, a self-expanding stent first. Uh, he pre-stented it to uh, reduce the, uh, the size. And then into this uh, pre-stenting self-expandable stent, he anchored uh, um, sapien wealth, uh, as is it shown here. And his uh, experiments, he could show that the ascites uh, rate was reduced and the right ventricular and diastolic volume was also reduced. So uh, he, could, uh, um, he could also show that this uh, heterotopic wealth treatment uh, option had, uh, was beneficial in his group of patients. But we also face uh, challenges. As you can see here, the vena cava superior is sometimes huge. It's uh, funnel-shaped. Uh, it al almost uh, goes into the right uh, atrium. And what happened here, uh, we, we lost off the, one of those uh, superior vena cava valves, uh, and it embolized in the right ventricle. In, in, into the end, the, the patient was operated, um, uh, but she didn't sh survive this procedure. Um, so these are the challenges because the anatomy is very uh, uh, demanding. It's sometimes huge. It's very variable, as you can see in the 3D prints here. And sometimes it ends up that we have uh, 45, 47 millimeters in the vena cava superior here, uh, uh, and uh, a very bulky 
uh, vena cava inferior. So we have to, fa to, to, uh, to address all these anatomies. So um, to do that, we developed a new uh, shape of the valve. So the vena cava superior valve has a waist, and the valve size itself uh, is, uh, is just uh, 20 millimeters. This is very much sufficient for the superior vena cava flow. But so with this waste, we can address uh, the uh, differences in the anatomy. So uh, in a recent paper, all these uh, um, techniques has been summarized. Uh, you can see the, um, the, 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 the amount of patients being addressed by these techniques is very, very limited. So it's in, it's in, in its infancy. We did five patients, sapien wealth, 10 former, seven uh, tr uh, trial line and trick inch, three and eight. And so, so this is uh, still an, uh, uh, some development to go. So in conclusion, th there, from my point of view as an adult cardiologist, there is a large unmet clinical need for these procedures. It's not a forgotten wealth. And the, uh, as I mentioned, it's in its early stage. Uh, the procedure of heterotopic wealth implantation, the CAVI, is a simple interventional procedure uh, with a straightforward uh, technique. Once you use self-expendable valves, it has reproducible hemodynamic improvements, and uh, the uh, clinical and functional uh, improvement has been demonstrated in, in two groups in individual, uh, individual compassionate patient, uh, patients. Thanks for your attention.